Hello guys, I hope you're doing okay. If you haven't watched the first part, I highly recommend watching it. I'll put the link in the description. Just a quick reminder. Abortion is defined as the explosion of conception product before the fetus reaches the age of viability, set at 20 weeks of amenorrhea, or a weight of less than 500 grams. It can be caused by a variety of factors, but in about 50% of cases, the exact cause remains unknown. And this video will discuss a positive diagnosis and the clinical forms of abortion. When it comes to a positive diagnosis, there are so many functional signs that can lead us to suspect abortion. The main symptoms reported by patients are metoragia or genital bleeding and pelvic pain. These pains are varied in intensity. A speculum examination and vaginal touch help us to directly observe the source of bleeding and assess the state of the cervix to confirm that the bleeding originates from the inside of the uterus and exclude the presence of any traumatic lesions such as tears or wounds of the cervix or the vagina which could be responsible for the bleeding. A closed cervix can be reassuring in some cases while an open or dilated cervix suggests an ongoing miscarriage. When it comes to paraclinical examinations, paraclinical investigations allow confirmation of the clinical diagnosis and the assessment of the severity and the guidance for management. Pelvic ultrasound is the first line examination to confirm the diagnosis, while biological tests are used to assess the impact of abortion on the patient's general condition. A complete blood count is done to evaluate the amount of hemoglobin and detect any possible anemia due to the bleeding and a blood group for potential transfusion. The natural progression of an abortion can be divided into five distinct clinical forms, each presenting a specific characteristic based on the stage of the abortion and the clinical sign observed. Let's start with the first one, a threatening abortion, a situation where the abortion is not yet imminent, but early signs suggest a threat of miscarriage. In this case, patients might present with a variable metoragia, which can be mild or moderate. Pelvic pain is usually mild or sometimes absent, allowing some patients to continue their normal activities for a certain period. During the clinical examination, the cervix is closed, indicating that there is no dilation yet and the vagina is empty, meaning no conception product has been expert. Pelvic ultrasound allows confirmation of the viability of the ovium, meaning the presence of an embryo with a heartbeat, but there may be a detachment of the ovium where the placenta begins to detach from the uterine wall, but the pregnancy may still be viable with appropriate treatment. The second type or form, which is abortion in progress. This indicates that the miscarriage process is already underway and the conception product is in the process of being expelled. In this case, patient might present with an increase in maturation, which becomes more abundant. Pelvic pain is usually intense and explosive. On the clinical examination, the cervix is open, meaning it is dilated and shortened in preparation for the explosion of the conception product. Sometimes conception product, meaning placenta or embryonic tissue, may be found in the vagina. Pelvic ultrasound sound shows that the conception product is being expelled, meaning it is already partially or completely expelled from the uterus. The third form or stage, a complete abortion, occurs when all conception products have been expelled from the uterus. After the complete explosion, bleeding gradually decreases and pelvic pain disappears. This marks the end of the abortion. On the clinical examination, the cervix is generally closed and there are no signs of residual conception products on the vagina. Ultrasound shows that the uterine cavity is free of any conception product, confirming that the abortion is complete. The fourth type, which is the incomplete abortion, occurs when the process of explosion of conception product is partially completed and there is some remaining in the uterus. This form is characterized by a persistence of bleeding, often accompanied by pelvic pain. In this case, pelvic ultrasound shows a heterogeneous intracavitary image, characteristic of trophoblastic debris remaining in the uterus. These debris might be in the form of placental or embryonic fragments that have not been expelled. Well, in this form, there are so many risks. In the short term, one of the main risks is the development of post-abortion endometritis, which is an infection of the uterus that can occur if tissues is retained inside of it. Long-term risk is due to the retention of debris, which can lead to the formation of uterine senescia or additions in the uterine cavity, which can cause menstrual disorders and lead to infertility problems. An additional risk is osteoid metaplasia, where abnormal bone tissues can form inside the uterus. The final step or the final form is stopped pregnancy, occurs when the embryo or the fetus stops development but remains in the uterus. In this case, pregnancy symptoms like nausea or fatigue decrease or disappear, but amenorrhea or the absence of menstruation persists while the pregnancy does not progress.
progress. On the clinical examination, the uterus is reduced in size as fetal development has stopped and the uterus no longer continues to grow. Perfect ultrasound reveals the presence of an embryo at least 5 mm in size but without any cardiac activity, meaning the absence of heartbeats. I hope these informations were helpful to you and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments. We will talk about the management and the treatment of any stage in the next video. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one.